Hello, hello, it is Jolene here from The Best Vinyl Cutters and today I wanted to help those of you who are designing on an iPad to better understand how to download fonts from other places like DeFont and how to actually get it on Cricut Design Space. So it's a little bit more complicated when you're on an iPad in comparison to a desktop, but I will show you exactly step by step how we can make it as easy as possible. So the first thing we need to do if we want to get some fonts onto our iPad is to get hold of an app. So we need to go into your app store, whoops, which is this button up at the top. And from here, we go into search for an app called iFont. And we're going to have to install this one. It's a free app. Um, hold on, I can't think and talk. iFont, there we go. Click search and we're going to just download it. So it's just this very, very first one. So we're gonna click on get. So this is now gonna install, and this is the little app that's going to basically install your fonts for you onto your system. All right, so sign in with your Apple ID and, and get that app downloaded. There we go. So now that you have the iPhone installed on your iPad or your iPhone, you can click on the app. And in here, we can basically do quite a few handy things. So first of all, you can see this menu on the bottom. We've got an installer, we've got a font finder, and then you can also do a few different things, which I don't really usually use. So we want to find a font and we can either use this bottom button to click through to fonts, or we can use this blue button over here to find fonts to install and you can see that you're going to have your most popular font sites already here ready to go so you can click straight through to google fonts to the font to a thousand and one free fonts or font space or we can even have open files to download from other places so first i'm going to show you how to get one from the font and then we can have another look at how to find one from somewhere else on the web so when you click through to the font you can actually see i'm on the font already we can either go and search through themes. So this is what you would see on desktop. You can have a browse and pick Valentine's or Halloween, or you can go with a handwritten script. I really like going to just the top up here, which is the top fonts at the moment. So they're the most popular fonts that are around. And from here, you can pick a font that takes your fancy. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time here having a browse through all the different types. So I'm just quickly going to pick one as an example, and I'm going to go with this mango salsa. So I click on the download and it's going to download the zip file. But come on. Why is it not happening? Oh, there we go. It was just a bit slow. I'm like, what's going on? So it downloads a zip file, but your app automatically opens up the zip file for you. So it skips the whole step of having to actually unzip the um, font like you would normally have to do. So all we have to do here is to import to iFont. And then on our, before we were on Font Finder, so I've just clicked over to Installer. And now we can have a look at Mango Salsa and click on install. It's going to tell us that we need to down, that the website is trying to download a configuration profile and I'll show you what that means in a minute. So just click on allow and it tells you that it's downloaded and now we need to go and review the profile in the settings app. So click on close and click on done here and go out of your app and head to your settings button. So your settings button is the gear icon. And now you'll see that we've got this extra bit that says profile has been downloaded. So what we want to do is to click on that and it's going to tell us we've just downloaded this mango salsa. What do you want to do with it? So we can say, well, we want to install this to our system. So click on install. It says the profile is not signed. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Click on install and install and let's get it done. And now we'll be ready to go to Cricut Design Space. The thing is, though, that with Cricut Design Space, because it was open before we actually downloaded the font, it's not actually going to load up the most recent changes you've made on your system. So when we loaded the, up this um, the Cricut Design Space app, it loaded up whatever was on your iPad at that time. 
So in order to force it to de to um, upload all the new things, or not to upload, it's not the right one, but to basically have all of those options in the system, we have to sign out and sign back in. So we have to refresh the app in order for it to be able to do that. And I just sign out. I quickly sign in again. So if you go to the text and you try and find your font and it's not there, that's why. And now we can go to a new profile. We can go to text and we need to click over to system. So system means the device that you're on. So our iPad or iPhone. And we would like to find our mango font that we just downloaded. There we go. Mango salsa and click on that. And now we can make our text. So I'll just pop my name in there. Oops. So Jolene, there it is. And from here, we can basically now go ahead and edit this text like you normally would. So very often you will find that if it's a script font, it's supposed to be flowy, nicely connected. Cricut Design Space will muck that all up for you. It's just that it's not being designed to read fonts very well. Um, a lot of people say it's so that we can use the Cricut fonts. I don't know if that's true. I just think that this is a very general app to design and fonts is not their expertise. So mine is all separated and I would like to move things closer together. To do that, I can go to edit and you can change the line, the letter space. So the space between the letters, I usually go to zero and then see what happens. So it moves closer together. And now we can use this negative to move the pieces even closer together. Sometimes this will fix the issue, but as you can see, my J and my O has now moved way too close together while there's still a bit of a separation between my last two letters. So it's not quite good enough for me. And what I like to do at this point is to separate my letters. So that's an action that I need to take. I need to make an action to separate and we can click on ungroup to basically create all of these separate layers so that our letters are now separate and I can pick it up and I can move it as I please. So now that you've done that, we can basically move these letters out a little bit or move them in a little bit. We can fix all of those spacing, drag a box around two if you want to move two letters at once and create it the way that you would like. I think I'm going to move this J just a tiny bit closer and then I'm happy. So now that we've done that, I need to make it all one word again because currently it's separate letters. And to make it one word, we're basically going to weld it together, which is your actions again. And you click on weld. And weld is going to attach or glue the letters together so that the software knows this is one word. Okay, we don't want it to see seven different separate letters because it will cut out each of those letters individually. We want it the software to know this is one thing. So weld will change it back into one thing. You'll see on the layers on the right hand side, we now have one layer again. And if I pick this up and move this around, then it's one thing. Now, something that often happens is what happened to my E. My E has filled in and that is very annoying and frustrating and it happens quite often. So it's probably a good thing that it happened with my example here. So I'm going to click undo because I would like to unweld it, but there is no unweld button. So I'm going to click on undo to make it go back to separate letters. And what I want to do is I want to move this E a little bit further away. And I like to make my word really, really big so that I can see what's going on. I don't know if you can see, but I can see that the N, that little line that goes from the N, the tail has actually just peeking out of the E um, center. And that's why it filled it in. So to fix this, I can pick up my E and I can move it away a little bit. So let me exaggerate what was going on. Basically this was going on, you just couldn't see it that well but the little tail of the N was going right into the center of the E. And so Cricut Design Space thought, oh, okay, well, let's fix this issue. Let's glue it all together. And it basically filled it in. So to fix it, I need to make sure that that little tail is not in the center. So to do that, I just need to move it a little bit more away. And then you can weld it all together again. And there we go, we fixed the problem. So, now we can resize it. Let me just quickly resize this because it is way too big. 
and then we can have a look at how you download a font from somewhere else. Okay, cool. So now we can also download things from elsewhere, right? There are a few very popular websites that you can go to to have a look at free fonts as well. So let me just find my Safari or my daughter's Safari. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so click on the Safari so we can go onto the web. And from here, you'll get to know if you know a few different types of sites that have free fonts or you can just even search for free fonts if you want to. For the sake of argument, I'm going to use the Hungry JPEG as my example. The Hungry JPEG has got loads of awesome um, bundles of SVGs, of fonts, on all sorts of different things. It's a really cool little website. And I am going to try and find, let me just go, actually freebies are just here. Let me just go free fonts so that I can get straight to where I want to go. All right, so I've got the Hungry JPEG free font and now we just want to click through to that so you've got the freebie of the week or we've even got a whole entire free font bundle at the go their freebies change regularly so if you're watching this at a different time you might not see a free font bundle you might not see the same free fonts so just keep that in mind so there's a nice big bundle of free fonts that we can download which is really cool okay so to get hold of this for free they've got a really handy little thing where you just have to share it so it's a great way for them to get a bit of promotion you have to register you don't have to pay for it um, but in order to get the freebie they're obviously got to get something out of it and that something is your email address so let me just quickly log in Okay, so now that I'm logged in, I can click on share to unlock and we can either tweet it or we can go to Facebook and basically just share it. Okay, so once you have shared it with some of your people, you would have the option now to download. So you can click on download and we're going to download it to our iPhones. All right, let's go. Where does things download? When you download something on your iPad or your iPhone, it goes into your files folder. So it's got this blue folder on it. So find that folder and click on that. On the left hand side, you'll see a download section and that's where all of your downloads are going to go. So here you can see I've got this free font bundle, but it's currently still in a zip format. So there's a few different things inside this folder. They've zipped it up because it's smaller in size. It's quicker to download. In order to unzip this, we're going to click on this and hold, and then we're going to go all the way down to the bottom and we're going to decompress it. So we would like to make it bigger. We go into unzip it, decompress, and now it's going to create a folder that we can click on and we can actually have a look at. So here they've basically got all of their documentation, which has got what is in, included in here. What are we allowed to do with it? And you've also got your folder full of all of your fonts. So now that I've done that, I can go back to my iFont app and we're going to go to Font Finder. But this time I'm going to open my files folder because I would like to find that folder. And automatically these came up, which is the zip files. I don't want the zip files. So I'm going to click on browse down on the bottom and go back to my downloads. And here I've got my folder that's already unzipped. And I can click on my fonts and I can click on any of the fonts that I would like to install. Okay, so you're basically going to go all the way into a folder. We can click on one of these and it's going to pop it into our installer. And so now we're going to do exactly the same thing as we did before. So we need to go, it was called Barely, right? So we're going to install that one. So same process. I'm going to move a bit faster because we all know what we're doing. Go back to your settings so that we can install the profile. So profile downloaded, yes. And install, 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 done. Great. And now we've got another font installed on our system. So again, in order to be able to use this, oops, where is my Cricut Design Space? In order to use this, if I went right now and I try to find it on the system, I searched for B-A-R, nothing comes up. And the reason why nothing comes up is because my app was open while I installed it. So once again, you will have to refresh your app. 
I like to just sign out, sign back in, and then you will have the font come up. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a very super quick overview of fonts, how to get hold of fonts, how to make it work, how to use it on Cricut Design Space, as well as how to tweak it. And that was really helpful for you. All right. Bye for now.